Тоа беше разговорот со портпаролот на Human Rights Watch за Близкиот Исток за ситуацијата со хуманитарната катастрофа во Газа која настана по операцијата на Израелската армија. Сега во студиото мој гостин е добро познатиот аналитичар и добар познавач на овие прилики бидејќи е патем роденот во Израел. Сем вакни. Thank you for having me. Добро дојде во во мојата неделна анализа сем ти на во повеќе наврати во медиумите во Македонија ни во повеќе странски медиуми истапи со свои ставови во во врска сова. А што 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 следува? Што сега ситуацијата делува на вистина драматично комплицирано? Israel made a substantial mistake by announcing its next move. Israel said the next move is a ground invasion. That's always a mistake. It's always a mistake to inform the enemy what you're going to do. It's always a mistake to provoke pressure by the West, by the United States even, not to harm civilians, not to do this, not to do that. The minute you announce your intentions, you're inviting, you're inviting pressures. And this is exactly what happened. Israel announced its in intentions, immediately started pressure from the United States, maybe to reconsider, maybe to not invade. What about the civilians? This and that. Immediately, Iran and its proxies, like Hezbollah and so on, Syrian regime, which is closely allied with Hezbollah, immediately they started to threaten Israel. Mm -hmm. Immediately, there was escalation in the West Bank, and so on and so forth. Now Israel cannot go back. Pred da prodolžime so so ova analiza. Go slušate ova svedočenje na gospodinu Brodec, tatko na tri deca i njegovata sopruga, trite deca se zemeni kako založnici na Hamas. Mislim, užasna situacija. Koja je perspektivata da se ostane за да тие луѓе, во најмало рака, оние деца, 200 заложници имаат земено. Кој начин од тие да бидат ослободени во оваа ситуација? Not, not militarily, definitely. Only via diplomacy and agreement, exchange of prisoners. There is no way to solve this in a military way. Bogdan, you must understand. Gaza is two cities, not one. There is a city above and there is a city under. То е нешто како Скопје буду ајде. No no no, you mean the size? Да. The size is like Newark, Newark, New Jersey. Да. Small, very small. Gaza, by the way, is 60 kilometers on two kilometers. It's tiny, tiny thing. Anyhow, there is Gaza above and Gaza under. Under the ground, there are 2,137 tunnels. Две илјади тунели. Yes. In these tunnels, there are 40,000 fighters. There are three hospitals. There are five mosques. The hostages, 100%, they are held inside the tunnels. There is no way to, to not only there's no way to liberate the hostages, there's no way to win this war. You can, of course, you can, of course, pour, pour fuel into the tunnels and, and light it up, of course, and kill all the hostages. And kill many civilians. Qatar has contact with Hamas. If you can understand it, they have been able to do some previous situations in these conversations with the new mediation to free the prisoners. Can Qatar do something? And where is it actually? The current crisis has nothing to do with the previous three. Israel has invaded Gaza three times, including 2021, 2014, 2009, 2006, four times. This is not the same. It's not the same situation because the consensus inside Israel now is that Hamas has to be eradicated, eliminated, nothing left, not a single fighter, not a single leader, no governance option, no access to politics, no money, no nothing. Consensus. Yes, that's consensus, left, right, and left and right are almost in a state of civil war about everything else. They are fighting over Netanyahu. They are fighting over the religious Orthodox Jews. They are fighting over money from the budget. There have been demonstrations over many months. But that is an option that is guaranteed to be saved for the prisoners. I think Israel gave up on the hostages. Can they hold 200 civilians to be killed? This is collateral damage. 
exactly as, as Israel accepts that civilians will die in Gaza and civilians will die in Israel. Because Israel is absolutely, has acted provocatively and disproportionately in the North, for example. I think there is a wish in Israel to push for a final resolution. Shall we say final solution of the situation? Что е што значи final solution? Знаеме на final solution на Хитлер како заврши на крај. There is a lot of despair. There is a lot of despair, a lot of rage and irrational thinking in Israel right now. Israel is not thinking about the day after. It is thinking about revenge. Дали посетата на Бајден нешто во таа смисла неговото влијание, влијанието на Соединетите Американски држави? Дали мислиш дека тоа успеа да, да, да ги смири овие страсти, овој бес за кој ти говориш, ова ирационално однесување на, 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 на израелската армија сега? No, I don't think, but I think uh, Biden was able to accomplish uh, two things. First of all, he convinced the Israeli government to reconsider a ground invasion of, of Gaza. And that is why Israel did not invade yet. Mm -hmm. The second reason, he convinced Israel that humanitarian corridors are necessary for the population of Gaza, especially if they move to the south. All of them move from the north to the south. They have somehow to be maintained, to be fed, to be... And so Israel now has agreed to collaborate with Egypt on humanitarian aid. But that is the extent of Biden's influence. That is the extent. Biden can provide ammunition, but it's not strictly needed, and the ammunition and, and uh, weapons that the United States... The United States is Ukraine and Israel. Yes, Ukraine, Taiwan, Taiwan, Israel. Israel is only 14 billion, for, for, for one four. But um, the ammunition that the United States is providing is not relevant mostly to this war. They're providing defensive ammunition. They're providing precision ammunition. So. It's not critical for this war. Israel doesn't really need the ammunition. Israel needs the signal from the United States, we are behind you, we will support you. And if Iran attacks you frontally or via proxies, we, with our you know, carriers and so on, we are going to counter-attack. Mm -hmm. So it's a signal of we are behind you, we have your back. No, don't want to go to the operation. I think logically and rationally, as a good friend, the United States is telling Israel, do not enter Gaza. You cannot win. If Israel enters Gaza, it cannot win in Gaza. And if Israel is attacked simultaneously by Hezbollah, Israel cannot win the war. It's the first time that Israel will be defeated militarily. So, if they come in the Koplen operation, Liban will activate the whole Africa. I don't think Israel can win this war. The Israeli army is in very bad situation, very bad state. It reminds me, the whole situation reminds me very much of Ukraine. Putin concentrated forces along the border of Ukraine, mm -hmm. but Putin acted wisely. To the very last second, he denied. He denied that he's going to invade. And, and Zelensky, Zelensky believed him. The Ukrainian government believed him that he's not going to invade. Consequently, they were not prepared. But similarly, the Russian army was a paper tiger, we now see, mm -hmm. paper tiger. Israeli army is a paper tiger. It's in extremely bad shape. Well over half the equipment is rotten. Uh, there has been budget cuts. Most of the reserves are not trained at all. There are shortages in everything from food to boots to weapons. Uh, it's nice, the propaganda. It's nice, the deterrence. We will win. We are the strongest. We are superior. But if you are rational, you know the limitations of your power. Israel can never win a war in Gaza and with Hezbollah. Кои се твоите предвидувања на крат, кратки стоглед на се ова што кажав, на кратка стаза, што ќе се случува сега? Ово изгледа прилично. Netanyahu and his cadre must provide something. They must throw a bone to the to the dog of rage and revenge. So they will invade Gaza. It will be a very limited invasion, limited land invasion. They will kill Hamas leaders, they will kill fighters, they will, and then they will withdraw. I think the, the entry and the withdrawal will be much faster than we, than we believe. I don't think it's going to last months. I don't even believe it's going to last weeks. I think they're going to enter, declare victory, and withdraw. The big enigma is when they enter Gaza, when the first tank crosses Gaza, will Hezbollah attack? That's the big question mark. 
Dobro, Hezbollah, Hezbollah je toliko spremen vojno. Sorry? Toliko je spremen podgotvan vojno, da. Hezbollah is equal to the Israeli army. Hezbollah has a division called Radwan, Radwan division. These are 8 to 10,000 commandos, exactly the same number like Israel. Israel has 10,000 commandos, and the commandos of Hezbollah are as trained, as, as qualitative as the commandos of Israel. Koji vlije na Hezbollah u ovoj moment? Koji ima li nekoj međunarodan faktor koji ga drži pod kontrolom? Only Iran. Only Iran. I think Iran is holding them back, actually. Mm -hmm. I think it's exactly opposite what people... People believe that Iran is pushing Hezbollah to attack. I think Iran is the only one that is holding them back. Tom, koji pomaga na Hamas? Vooružani se toliko mnogo što Izrael ne može da gi soblada? Ako vleze v okopljeno... It's not necessarily how many weapons they have. It's the high infrastructure that they created. The tunnels, the warehouses, the rocket manufacturing facilities, rocket factories. Everything is underground, everything is integrated. There are very short distances for resupply. They are prepared. They are prepared. This is the worst kind of war. It's known as urban warfare. It's the worst type of war. In Fallujah, much fewer people defeated the American army. By the way, by the way, Hamas has 40,000 fighters. 40,000. Hezbollah has 110,000. Not small numbers. Kako će se postavati, golemo vljanje ki ima golemite međunarodni faktori, Sojete Amerikanski državi, NATO, Kina, Rusija se razbira. Soglepna globalna ta situacija bezbednosta, mnogo loša. Kakvi će biti nimnite potezi, kako ti će vlija, ali neki predpostavljam, da je kada Putin ova vojda mnogo mu odgovara. Of course, in China. Ikida is total. China as well. This is China's opportunity to escalate the situation in Taiwan. It's precisely why Biden is asking for $10 billion for Taiwan. Um, these are fault lines. We are in a period of decline of the West and ascendance of the East. It's a change in power matrix, change in power relations. And so the West is defending itself. And along the fault lines, the meeting, meeting places between East and West, we will see wars. Kosovo, Israel, Taiwan, Ukraine. They are places where the East meets the West. And there, we're going to have war. Possibly even, possibly even, Poland and Hungary. I'm not taking this out of account. <laughs> Poland and Hungary, definitely Hungary, belong actually to the East, not to the West. They are accidentally in the European Union, ment mentally, economically, and many other ways. Hungary is East Bloc country, not West Bloc. So I don't know, I don't know how this is going to translate, but I think there you, sh you will soon see a lot of tension and friction. Well, Hungary. Hungary, and I think also Poland. So Russia and China are creating an alternative to the United States. They join together mm -hmm. in BRICS, and Iran is now a member of BRICS. <laughs> So this is the alternative to the United States, and they're fighting back, absolutely, over territory, over economic resources, over technologies, over everything. This is a battle. Life How is it related to the Russian-Ukrainian war? First of all, first Soon, I think there will be enormous pressure on Zelensky to make peace with Putin, including territorial concessions. The United States cannot support two simultaneous wars. First of all, technically, the United States doesn't have a budget because of the, of the situation with the Republican Party mm. in the House. The United States doesn't have a budget. The budget of the United States expires in 30 days, and then there's no budget. When there's no budget, it is forbidden by law in the United States to give military aid or foreign aid to anyone. The second thing is, the entire budget of the Pentagon is $775 billion. And now Biden is asking for $100 billion <laughs> to Ukraine. This is a huge, never ending story. huge slice of the defense spending. And the, the 100 billion is just the latest. There have been previous packages. Putin se vide so kineski predsedatel i kako reakcija na to NATO održa i ten sostanok kako odgovor na ta sredba. Što je toliko dramatično što 
NATO svika, go svika sovetot za da razgovara za ova sredba na rusko-kineski otvr. First of all, a client of China, North Korea, it's a client of China. A client of China is now supplying military aid to Russia. Not small military aid, there have been 1,100 containers which left North Korea. So clearly China entered as a commitment on the side of Russia in the war with Ukraine. They are doing it through North Korea, so what? It's the first time that China openly supports the Russian side in this conflict. On the other hand, Ukraine failed in its offensive. The Russians are now succeeding in their offensive. And um, a lot of the money that was supposed to be allocated to Ukraine is now forwarded to Israel. I'll give you one example. Ammunition that was destined for Ukraine was now rerouted and sent to Israel. That's a fact, yesterday. So sooner or later, the military aid to Ukraine will dry up. We hear voices in Slovakia, we hear voices in Hungary and Poland. Soon or later, this chapter will be finished. If the line in Ukraine is broken, the rest of Europe is fair game to put in. Rest of Europe, Baltic states, Poland, they are fair game. It will be clear then that the West is not a reliable long-term ally. This is doubly true if there is a massive Israeli failure, massive Israeli defeat within Israel. Now look at Israel. Israel, Israel relocated all the citizens from the south to the center, up to five kilometers. And now it relocated all the citizens from the north to the center. The north of Israel is empty of citizens. The south of Israel is empty of citizens. Israel became an enclave, a ghetto, absolute ghetto. There's military, citizens, and military. That's Israel now. And if the military breaks, if there's a defeat in the north or defeat in the south or both, citizens are there and they are totally trapped. And if the United States then does not intervene, then the world is fair game to China and to Russia. This is, this is of course, allow me one more sentence. This is, of course, very reminiscent of Vietnam. Very reminiscent. Vietnam started exactly the same way. In the beginning, uh, the United States sent military advisors and some ammunition. Then they sent weapons. Then they sent a few soldiers. Then they sent a lot of soldiers. This is how Vietnam started. Mm. Israel is the United States' new Vietnam because Israel is on the front line with Iran Iran is together with Russia, Russia is together with China. After the question, what is the Balkan in this situation that is permanently fragile? The Balkan has the two factors in play, which, uh, which are in the Middle East. The Balkan has a Muslim population, some of which is radicalized, not all, of course, but some of it is rad radicalized in multiple locations. Kosovo, Bosnia, Herzegovina, and so on and so forth. And the Balkans has Russian influence, competing with American influence. So the Balkans is exactly a clone of the Middle East, a clone. And if there will be a massive American failure in the Middle East, there will be a replay of the Middle East in the Balkans. Sir Vaknin, uh, optimistic as usual. Da. A ti blagodaram što me se gostin vo ovo ova nedelna analiza. Počitovani gledači, a gledate nedelnata analiza, vi blagodaram za vnimanijeto i dogledanje.